All right, hi, welcome back everybody. Attorney Steve Vondren, we are talking about boxing piracy. This is one of the most difficult companies to deal with, G&G &G closed circuit events. And here's what happened. I get a lot of questions about, you know, sometimes you'll get a call from one of their attorneys and they'll be saying, I want 20 grand, I want 30 grand, I want 40 grand, even more, because you showed the boxing match without the commercial license. And so this is when my firm gets called in saying, hey, what, what's going on? I mean, I can't afford this. You know, a lot of restaurants that we represent are just still getting over COVID and trying to get back in, into the groove of things. So this video is for you restaurant owners, bar, taverns. You know, we have tattoo parlors, hookah bars, all kinds of things. So anybody where you might be showing the fight, okay? I've got lots of videos on my channel for this more in depth around uh, dealing with other areas of uh, boxing privacy defense. But let's talk here about G&G &G closed circuit. What happens if they're demanding 30 grand and they're saying, oh, that's it. Oh, you know, uh, we're not taking any less than that. No, nothing less than that. You need to look at your jurisdiction. And if you if it, the case is already in court, sometimes you've already been served, someone's in complaint, you're actually in court. Look at your district, look at your judge, see how they've handled these cases before. A lot of these companies have, like J&J uh, &J Sports, um, <clears throat> they will have uh, certain courts that they tend to like to file cases in or where they're finding infringement. So, um, but what happens if you say, uh, you know, I don't have 30 grand and the attorney's, uh, you know, he's being tough and saying, well, sorry, I'm gonna sue you, you know? And that does happen particularly with G&G &G closed circuit events. Really, really, um, <clears throat> really, really tough with their intellectual property rights. All right, so when you default on a complaint, and if you wanna read this, you can. Basically, this is the Canelo fight. You had a restaurant that was exhibiting the match. Here it is on May 4th, the broadcast via satellite. So under the federal telecommunications laws, they break it into your satellite and your cable. If, you're, if you infringe or basically intercept a satellite signal, it can be more expensive if it's willful, okay? And it leads to commercial gain. So, um, but here they were alleging satellite. It was shown up on the TV. Uh, they didn't have the proper license. Sometimes people will say, well, I thought I had an ESPN sports license, or gee, I don't know who put it up on the screen. Somebody must have uh, blasted it up on the screen or some kind of you know stick that you could stick into the smart TV. There's different ways the fights get shown, and it could be shown on one or more TVs, and that's something that they look at. How did you advertise? How many TVs did you have it on? These are things that they look at in determining a settlement. All right, so here uh, the, the particular defendant did not answer. Um, I have a video on what happens in a default judgment. You can pause and read this if you want. Typically, if you don't answer on time, the court's gonna, the plaintiff attorney is gonna enter the default, the court's gonna confirm it, then you're gonna have a prove up hearing where you prove your damages, and that's what's going on in this case. And again, this case here is from Texas, El Paso. So judge here, we have Judge Guadarrama, and you know, if you have Judge Guadarrama in a future case, this could give you an indication of how he would be ruling if you default on a G&G &G closed circuit or J&J &J sports. Um, all right, so there's the legal standard. Here's a little bit about the Telecommunications Act. As I mentioned, for satellite, prohibits any unauthorized um, person from intercepting any radio communication and divulging or publishing the existent content, substance, purport, effect, or meaning of such uh, intercepted communication to any person. Pr creates a private right of action. That means they can sue you, and you have various penalties or remedies or violations, actual or statutory damages, enhanced damages if it's willful and you were seeking commercial gain. Um, like cover charges and things like that, or your advertising, trying to get people in to raise revenue, those things can get you, plus attorney fees, and as you'll see on this default, interest as well. Um, so here, what happens when you, you can pause and read this if you want, but a defendant, when you default, you're admitting all well-pled allegations. So if they're alleging that it's willful, if they're alleging that you showed it on 10 TVs, you're admitting that by not defending your case. So if you want to defend and say, that's crazy, it's not true, you need to get a lawyer. Companies cannot represent themselves in federal court. All right, so you're admitting the well-pled facts. Let's move on. Here you go, you had the plaintiff seeking judgment, and down here, 
The plaintiff was ultimately seeking 10,000 in statutory damages. This is what the statute provides for. So compare that when you have this uh, attorney going, you know, we want 30, we want 40, we want 50. Oh, you guys are a big business. You know, you make lots of money. It's a fancy restaurant. Things we hear all the time. Look at this um, 10,000 in statutory damages. Okay, so that's what you might be facing for the satellite statute and also the cable statute, but the enhanced damages are increased with the satellite statute. So um, you, the aggrieved party, that's the plaintiff, may recover an award of statutory damages for each violation in a sum not less than 1,000 or more than 10,000. Look at this, as the court considers just so there's things, you know, a local uh, judge may take into account. You have this big, uh, these G&G, they're filing all these lawsuits everywhere. Um, a lot of people, I'll be honest with you, a lot of people, my clients, they don't know or they have, they have a license that they thought was good enough for commercial, um, you know. So the court is going to hopefully look at these things um, or they may give some hometown uh, leniency to the hometown restaurant. So you never know what's going to happen, okay? Uh, so it's court, the court has the discretion if you default. So again, this could be a lot better decision than trying to uh, pay these guys 30 grand, 40 grand, things that, that we hear them demanding, okay? So yeah, um, so take a look at that. Look in your district. What are the defaults coming out in your district? What are the judges doing? Look up your judge. How much are they awarding? And then down here, um, the plaintiff also seeks, remember I said the enhanced damages, the plaintiff is also seeking 50,000 in statutory enhanced damages, okay? And so again, you can get enhanced damages. Here it is, here's the standard. If the court finds that the violation was committed willfully, that means you meant to do it, or turned a reckless blind eye, as we say, and for purposes and for purposes of direct or indirect commercial advantage or private financial gain, once again, the court, in its discretion, may increase the award of damages by an amount not more than 100000 for each violation, okay? So they're seeking fifty plus the ten. They're seeking $60,000 plus their attorney fees. And again, this is probably why you get a company like G&G &G Closed Circuit. They get on the phones and they tell you they want 20, 30, 40, or more, $40,000. So weigh that against um, uh, potential damages that a court in your jurisdiction may apply. Um, here's some explanation on what willfully is. As I mentioned, it could be a disregard for the governing statute and an indifference, okay, just turning a blind eye. So this is what the plaintiff sought in this case. And they submitted uh, affidavits and things like that to try to convince the judge that this was really a really a bad case, next level, you know. So here you are, if you if you decide to default, you're at risk, as you can see, you can be at risk for a lot of money, so make sure you're speaking with a, a intellectual property attorney that can help you go through this and decide, do you have willful factors? Did you advertise? Were there drink premiums? You know, was there financial gain? If you have that, then you have a little more risk than just the 10,000. That's under either of the, the federal statutes, okay? And here you have, for purposes of direct or indirect commercial gain, here's some factors. In determining the amount of an award for willfulness damages where defendants intended to exhibit the program to secure a private financial gain and direct commercial advantage by misappropriating the plaintiff's license exhibitions, courts have considered such factors. Think about these factors, whether they apply in your case. Uh, the number of televisions. Did you have 10, 20 TVs or was it just one in a tiny small bar? Um, the food and beverages it sold, were there drink premiums? Was there a cover charge? Charge five bucks to get in, watch the fight? And whether it was broadcast in a, this is an interesting one, in a relatively urban city where the broadcast would have more than a minimal impact. You're showing it downtown Chicago or um, downtown San Francisco, for example. So um, courts have considered also whether the defendant advertised. And again, if you're a lot of these things, they catch you because you're advertising on Facebook. I mean, if you're advertising on Facebook, you got to get the commercial license. I mean, that you're making it really obvious and easy for them. And that's why you get these uh, really aggressive demands over the telephone. Um, here, there is no evidence. Here, the court's looking at this saying there's no evidence that they advertised. Plaintiff's auditor states that there was no cover charge, so there's no advertising, no cover charge. 
The auditor describes the establishment as a bar. It plain of states that the establishment held a license or permit issued by the Alcoholic Beverage Commission, ABC. And at the time he visited the bar, there were 17 patrons. So, you know, it's not a huge commercial event. And a lot of people say, well, you know, can't we just argue that? I, I didn't make any money. I said, well, problem is you have the statutory damages. It may not be enhanced damages. Yes, you can argue that. But um, nevertheless, you do have some liability here for, you know, broadcasting a fight without the commercial fee, which is usually a couple thousand bucks. So that's what we have here. The court found the requested enhanced damages of 50000 was excessive, uh, did not go for it. Accordingly, the plaintiffs awarded the plaintiffs only 5500 They award them 2750 for the statutory damages. And so if we come down here, you see the conclusion. Here's what the, here's what the plaintiff, G&G &G Closed Circuit, was able to obtain 2750 in statutory damages, 5500 in enhanced damages, the attorney seeks their reasonable attorney fees. The court said that's $1,250 and granted the total default of $9,500 plus costs. So that's a lot less than what you may be hearing um, on the phone. 20, you got to have 30, 40, you know, I want 40, um, these kinds of things. So weigh it. Um, the negative side is a federal court case becomes public record. Um, so it means somebody could find you in the public record. That's not always great. Uh, but consider that, and there it is. And there was 1.3% post-judgment interest on the judgment until it's paid in full. But, you know, if, you, if you're being demanded 30 grand and you can't afford it and they're threatening a lawsuit, not uncommon, um, you may want to take a look. Is the default a better route for you? You get the judgment and then you pay it off, right? Also, the judgment may go on your credit report, so think about that as well. Okay. This is general legal information only, not legal advice. If you get a letter, you get that phone call. Trust me, you do not want to talk to these people on the phone. They are aggressive. They will probably intimidate you, uh, may, maybe even make you a little sick to your stomach with some of the things I've heard. But um, that's a general overview. If you need some help, go find us on the web at attorneysteve.com. That's attorneysteve.com, the first name in legal services. Have a great weekend, y'all. Got to go. Bye-bye.